look, I'm concentrating on solutions and not on the problem. I believe that prop tech is a solution. And when I look at everything that's going on with the Department of Justice and the real estate industry, to me, I think the people who use and leverage technology as a benefit to the consumer will excel. What's going on, world? And you know that the IOI Summit is full of prop tech. And there were over 100 people who submitted to be one of the 12 people selected to participate in the pitch battle. I have the great honor of serving as the MC of the IOI Summit pitch battle, which means I get to interview the most fabulous companies in the world of prop tech. And so today we have Premise HQ with us and we have Rafi Dowler and we have Don Blaney with us. What's going on today, guys? Thank you, Marky. Um, it's, it's great being here and really appreciate the intro. So I and thank you, Marky. Hey, Don. I went over to your website and I have actually been interviewing companies for an AI assistant. I started using, uh, let, let me say this, in your world, I'm a late adapter. In the world of real estate, I'm an early adapter. So I started leveraging artificial intelligence the first week of December 2022. And instantly there was this love affair and I just couldn't get enough of it. So every single day I'm leveraging and playing with different tools and even want to go take a class to become an AI animator. If a real estate professional was looking for an AI assistant, what can Premise HQ do for them? Thank you for the question, Marky. So um, what we're bringing to the real estate kind of prop tech ecosystem is three digital employees. That's what we're calling them. So, but they are essentially like your AI assistants. One is named Lynn, and she is our virtual concierge, your front office support, if you would, to engage with your uh, tenants, your vendors, to help answer any question related to any of your property and if your portfolio and all of that stuff. Then we have Alex. Uh, sh she is our back office persona and she can handle like, you know, things like certificate of insurance to uh, sales data collection, to automating a lot of those contractual kind of renewals and information Q and A's in the back office, right? And last but not least is Quinn and he is the property manager's assistant, if you would. So he can keep an eye on the building automation systems, network data, um, read through the building manuals, equipments that are in the building, and, and let the building operators or the property managers know that what kind of preventive maintenance they should be doing. And um, if there is any issue with the network or if any issues with the building automation systems and, and things like that. So those are the three personas that we're bringing to the table today. So you have three AI digital employees, Lan, Alice, and Quinn. And is the focus in the property management aspect of the world of real estate? That is correct. Okay. So now when I'm thinking of, I'm thinking property manager, and let me just be clear. I have owned a lot of real estate. I have been a property manager. It is the one position I hate. It is the one position I did not excel at. Let me just be clear. It actually, as a result of me not being good and not finding what I wanted in a property assistant, my husband and I sold every piece of real estate that we owned other than our house. And as you well know, just had a closing uh, last week on my block at over $1 million. So I'm real equity strong, right? But that does not yeah. mean that I want to buy any real estate that I must manage. So instantly I'm thinking you're a solution to anybody else who might not be good at property management. I've taken, a, there's a program called CIC here in the city of Chicago. I've taken their property management, earned their property management certificate three times and still refuse. Someone asked me the other day, Marky, you're not, you're not buying other investment property? No, I'm scarred. I'm going to be honest with you. But now you're a solution that I understand how to use AI, but you could be a solution for me. Now, when we're thinking property management, does that also mean that this assistant could help with things like um, Airbnb properties or we're talking traditional property management? It can definitely help with Airbnb properties as well. But like just one thing I want to make sure uh, we are, we're on the same page. It doesn't replace you, Marky, right? It, it helps you. 
So it doesn't replace the person. You are great at what you do. It is going to essentially help you do those mundane tasks that we humans are not great at, right? So kind of remembering to do something, remembering to kind of uh, in, like, you know, renew the contract or, or review that sales data or review that, you know, certificate of insurance or, or make sure that the lease related um, uh, rights are being fulfilled. So these are the things that like as humans, we are not always sitting there and like reviewing this day to day. This is where the AI can be really powerful, keeping tabs on those things and kind of sending out notification, communication and, and fulfilling any requests that, you know, your tenants or your vendors are sending to you. So then coming back, as an AI assistant, it's essentially doing the top of the funnel work and then the human interaction is still me at the bottom of the funnel. Yes. Like it can initiate a call, schedule the, can it schedule an appointment for me yes. uh, using Calendly? It, yep, exactly. Yep. And then I just need to show up. Right. Okay. It still keeps you in the power. It keeps you in the driving seat, mm -hmm. but it essentially is helping you removing that mundane activities that we usually have to in app have to do in absence of this. So let me, let's say this. Let's say that I have a Section 8 tenant. We have these annual um, inspections that must be done. Could it essentially schedule an appointment with me, the tenant, and the Section 8 inspector? Absolutely. Because I don't like to communicate with, you know, with them. Absolutely. So it can definitely, like, you know, send out, messages to all three parties. It will have access to your calendar, right? And send out all the availability that you have to those other parties and they can select from there. And then based on the common selection, it can book an appointment. Okay. So you've trained Premise HQ. So Lynn, Alice, and Quinn. The question I have is, can we train it further on property managers' proprietary information? Absolutely. And that's where actually we differentiate between from many other like point solutions that are out there because we're built on a data platform and, and a no code tool, which enables us to actually extend the capability and adapt it to their exact needs, right? And, and that adaptability is the critical piece for us to deliver for our end customer. Okay. So right now in the world of real estate, you might've heard of the NAR settlement agreement and we're going we're not going back and forth. However, there will be no visual representation of compensation offered per the MLS. Now, where things are going to differentiate is based on the state and what happens in your marketplace. So here in the city of Chicago, historically, the landlord would uh, compensate the tenant rep. Okay. However, there are places that the tenant pays their tenant rep plus the rep of the landlord, okay? Yep. It, I had a very interesting conversation with someone in leadership today because we're talking about agency and fiduciary responsibilities. And we thought through a new system. We cannot use essentially a third-party portal, but we can use our own company portals to convey information. If I wanted my company to offer cooperating compensation to potentially any tenant rep, can we set up, and I'm assuming this might be Alice, the back of the house, that emails and um, emails, maybe answering calls, text messages could be sent on just the compensation piece? One of our use cases we've just deployed is the ability to connect to emails, ex extract information out of emails. So if there are questions or there's content in there that you want to share, it can make that accessible. And then through our platform, we can have it connected to any kind of pipeline of data you want to and share that to anybody you want to have, have access to it. So whatever mode you want to go, you know, over text, it can go over email. It could even go over a voice if you need to. So there's a variety of mediums that we can share that data with. But it, so long as that data is somewhere you can get access to it and you were given credentials to access it, we can do whatever you want to do with that. We can transform it. We can share it. Yeah. And here's why I'm asking. So 
um, my one of my past state presidents, he's actually a past state president and a past uh, regional vice president. He had made a comment on Facebook. And in that comment, he said, you know, now is the time for us to just simply pick up the telephone to call the listing agent or the landlord representative to ask them about compensation. But then a equally a seasoned person. So I'm talking about people who have been licensed as long as I am old came on the post and said, provided they return your phone call. Now, I, I kind of start laughing because visually I envision a logistics nightmare Yeah, because the the agent is already stressed and, and, and working as much as humanly possible. They don't have the additional time to start building uh, telephone calls, emails, text messages, inbox messages on every single social platform about cooperating compensation. OK, so every buyer rep or even tenant rep is getting ready to be mad because the agent who did not have enough time in the first place likely will not have the time to return these phone calls. Yeah. The Department of Justice has stated that we cannot use intermediaries. So all these third party portals that are coming up for essentially a split, we can't use them. But that does not mean that the information cannot come directly from us or, or through our office. Right. About any cooperating compensation or even if we're willing to cooperate. So when I'm thinking of an AI assistant now, I'm thinking of it in a totally different light. Right. And this is just. This is just new, right? Because we didn't, as of August the 17th, it has never been mandated that we have to practice this way, right? So now what I'm thinking is, how do we as real estate agents who are overworked, right, who don't have the time, how do we set up one of these assistants, Lynn, you know, Alice or Quinn, to be able to communicate that on our listings, provide the social proof that we communicated it, and potentially, if we have the contact information for the other agent, we can email it. We can call and leave them a voicemail. We can text them. So then we have a checklist saying, well, when they said we didn't communicate and then they want to bring an ethics complaint, we could be, oh, no, 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 no. Uh-uh. We called you at this time. We left you this voicemail because infamously people, well, one, their voicemail box is full. <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> okay, so the voicemail box is full. No, I called you. And it maybe it'll say uh, received a, a, a message, right? Or voicemail box is full. Oh, wait a minute. Let me just stop a second. When I said logistics nightmare, every <laughs> time I talk this scenario out, I see another issue. When they call the agent back for every single agent, if your voicemail box is full and you call the listing agent to ask about cooperating compensation, I promise you they're not going to call you back twice. <laughs> if they call you and your voicemail box is full, do not anticipate that they will call you again because you just wasted their time for your failure to clean out your inbox. Yeah, uh, yeah. Mark, okay, it sounds like you are actually bringing in a new opportunity here. Well, I mean, look, I'm concentrating on solutions and not on the problem. I believe that prop tech is a solution. And when I look at everything that's going on with the Department of Justice and the real estate industry, to me, I think the people who use and leverage technology as a benefit to the consumer will excel. Yeah, no, absolutely. So Great. the way you are describing it, it's it's essentially if I kind of tell you that how would we deploy Alex to actually help solve that problem. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember the movie Matrix by any chance? Uh, I, I remember the movie Matrix. And the only thing I'm thinking of in Matrix, right, is when you swing your arm back and it looks right. like you're going to hit the ground. Okay, <laughs> But yes, I remember the movie Matrix. So do you remember that scene where, like, you know, Neo and, like, you know, um, Trinity goes into that white space and they load up, like, you know, how to, you know, like and pilot a helicopter. Do you remember okay. that? Mm -hmm. Right? So think about that as a skill, right? So neat the trainee goes there and says that, hey operator, load me the you know helicopter piloting manual. And then you know, she blinks a couple of eyes and then she knows how to do it now. Right? So it's a similar concept and in our side, we can actually create that skill that you're talking about, right? So if you're going to hire a new employee, 
you're going to train them on that skill that, okay, you are going to call this person. You're going to go through these numbers. You're going to take note of that. What time did you call? You know, if you left a voice message, if you didn't get a voice message, right? So you're going to create this. And if you do get hold of that person, then you're going to, what do you communicate with them, right? And what are the follow-ups? So you're going to train an employee in a very similar way. So hmm. that same thing will, is going to happen with our digital employee. So you can create that skill and load up that skill to Alex and that you can give that data to Alex and Alex is going to go through that pro process of following up. It will create that log of all the calls, all the information and deliver that to you. So now what I'm thinking is could an individual company, real estate team or individual inside of having an AI assistant have a compensation manager? Can you right. describe it a little bit more? So a compensation manager would understand if there was going to be cooperating compensation, not cooperating compensation, provide any additional terms and rules around cooperating compensation, provide information on whether or not that listing agent has a variable rate contract mm -hmm. in place, right? So it essentially is a compensation expert, might even have a, a calculator, right? And it would be essentially uh, real estate agents when someone uh, use, let's say, uh, one of the scheduling systems, show on time, I was I had lost my train of thought, show on time, that they could have it communicate back and say, you know, thank you for scheduling an appointment for 4458, right? Uh, the property is currently listed at blah, blah, blah. The seller has stated that they are willing um, to uh, entertain, cooperate in compensation. However, they are not willing to disclose the amount and have requested that you submit all offers with proof of funds, right? And no, there is no variable rate commission on said property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And now when that person on showing time, if we uh, collected their email address and their phone number, right, Alice could then call back, email and text this person all that information to all these different channels to state that they, quote, you know, sent it. Now, they could say, you know, on said property, um, no, the uh, the seller is not offering cooperating compensation. Please uh, write your strongest offer. They will not request highest and best. All offers will be presented on so-and-so date at so-and-so time. Yeah, absolutely. So so we, we have not exactly but similar kind of a use case in the sense that similarity is like, you know, in, in, in broad sense, I would say. So we are using Alex for certificate of insurance management. Right, so if you think about a commercial facility, a commercial portfolio, um, a a big portfolio manager can have three thousand to five thousand tenants in their uh, commercial spaces, and each of those tenants need to have insurance, uh, like you know, present, right, and and current, um, and that itself could be a very long or or time consuming activity for a person to actually maintain. So that's where it's a very good use case, like you're describing, for Alex to actually go in read through the lease or connect to their, you know, data system to understand that what is the insurance requirement for that specific tenant and draft an email, send that out to that tenant saying that, hey, your insurance is coming up for expiry and these are the things that you need to fulfill as an insurance requirement. Please give me the, you know, new insurance, right, in a timely manner. So it's very similar kind of a workflow that you're talking about or a skill that you're talking about. Oh, I love it. So I know that you have uh, Alice. Don, could you show us who Alice is and what Alice can do? I shall show you Lynn, actually. <laughs> yeah, show me Lynn. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. You, it was Lynn. It was Lynn. So just so I'm getting Lynn ready. Mm -hmm. Lynn kind of fills the role of a virtual concierge. And Lynn allows a person to interact using natural language, having a conversation. And it's great for someone who's more of a guest or an outsider to the location. And so what Lynn can do is when you ask Lynn a question, she can access whatever data source she's been trained on. 
So as you were saying, if you wanted to have someone ask about a property or a location or details about it, and there could be all the details that a possible buyer wants to see around what kind of, how old's a roof, all these kind of details. If they're all available in the data set, they can answer those questions. So very briefly here. Hi, Lynn. Can you say hi to Marky? Hello. I'm Lynn, a helpful assistant. Unfortunately, I don't have the capability to directly communicate with individual. However, if you have any questions or need assistance with anything related to Realcom and Ipon, feel free to ask. If you have a slight background on the, the answer there. We actually had Lynn trained for the last conference we were at, and she was the assistant to manage how to get around, all a session, how to book a session, how to add to your calendar, all those pieces an outsider wants to find out or interact with for the event. So whatever content we want to train her on, she's available to share that and interact. Now, Ken, would Lynn be branded? on the company or on Premise HQ? So could we brand Lynn and put our different backgrounds and things of that nature? Yes, we can, uh, Marty. And, and also one thing that I want to add to what just Don just shared is Lynn is also available through chat, interface, through SMS, and through email if you want to, right? So it's, she's, she's not only available through his virtual kind of avatar format, which is, which is a great format for kind of uh, a, um, a location, kind of having a kiosk and having that available for a person to have that almost like a person, personal level communication, but you can actually uh, have her available on your website, on your um, like, you know, phone line or even in a text message. Excellent. And so now I'm thinking real estate investors, I'm thinking property managers. I'm thinking how it can assist, especially what I'm seeing uh, in my marketplace is a void of property managers on one to six units, right? So this could then potentially help that person who mm, tends to be um, worn out from other activities like myself in life, right? Mm -hmm. That you could train it, but then even help potentially other people or build your real estate business through property management just for uh, one to six units because there is a void in the marketplace for property managers just based on the amount of units. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And you just said you trained her for an event. So then outside of the office, what are some other ways that in the property management space they could use it uh, because you just used her for a real common event? Yeah, so um, obviously commercial spaces, multifamily, residential, right? Um, even in in an in a tenant space, if you wanted to, right, have that uh, uh, that kind of a personal touch, if you would, to have them have the guests or the occupants ask questions about the building, requesting service around the building, and 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 all of that, right? Excellent, I love it. So you're going to be Sorry, here. Retail is a retail is a great use case as well. I forgot about retail. Well, I would give me, uh, so in retail, what, what does that look like? So if you think about it, going into a mall, right, asking for, uh, like, where is that store located, right? Or is anybody selling this product in this mall? So one good thing about online shopping is we are very used to doing a search, right? Whereas in retail, uh, in a mall, like, it's, it's more about browsing, yeah. which both experiences are great, but... If you can bring that search experience into the retail space, that can improve some of those buyers who are coming into the retail space and wants to go to that exact location and find that exact product, right? And that's where a lean can be really powerful by connecting to the mall map um, and then providing them direction into a you know a specific store. And if the portfolio owner already has like you know the uh, retail stores connected. That's great. If not, we can also connect the retail stores and their inventory to give Lynn the ability to actually search through inventory and tell them which stores have that product in hand. Yeah, two issues that I've run into recently in the mall. One is where Uber's going to pick me up because when you're in the store, 
you don't know exactly which door, especially if you're in a flagship store, like let's say Dillard's, right? There are three different exits. And the question is, where am I in conjunction to how I'm going to leave out? So there's a lot of times I have to walk around uh, <laughs> to find my car because there, I don't, I'm not truly aligned right with the map, right? Uh, based on the three doors that you can go out of. The next thing is when I'm going into a department store, I'm generally going for a specific section in that store. There might be a, a certain designer that I'm looking for, and I want to go to whatever floor, whatever, you know, corner of that store. And that is you have to generally find someone to ask a question of, and you don't know who's working in the store, who's not working in the store. So between where Uber's going to pick me up and yep. where I'm just going to throw a, a, a design, St. John is located in the department store that I'm specifically going to to get it, right? Then this could have that because you could load every designer. You could put there on the second floor next to the ladies, uh, next to the ladies room where you're not getting that essentially on any of these other systems. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Okay. So just the, um, making things substantially easier while on the premise of any property. And, and making it more easy to connect to, right? So you are essentially, you know, the, the, thing about us as human beings so we are conversational beings right so so that being that conversation through the ai and giving that information ac across very easily uh rather than having a map or having like you know kind of that instruction manual or even like you know your um uh, directory in a list that usually people do right now right it, it makes that more personal i love it i love it i love it i love it now, is there anything special you're working on just for the IOI Summit? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Don will be presenting. Um, so we are we're getting ready and we will have some really good um, um, presentation. I'm looking forward to it. Well, I'm looking forward to you participating in the IOI Summit and seeing what might be new coming out of Premise HQ. I can definitely see how it can benefit real estate agents. And now I'm going to go and think more about having that compensation manager for the individual. Actually, I'd never even thought about it till we got on this call that as a brokerage, we have 253 agents. We need to have a compensation manager. I, I, I think any company, because of the, uh, the subject being new, the fact that we can feed AI everything from facts.realtor from our state association website, our local association website, uh, everything, every single document that has been given to us, it can be trained on that. Uh, yeah. If nothing else, leveraging it to be able to train mm -hmm. uh, our employees, right, yeah, on all that, and the ability mm -hmm. to be able to yeah. translate it, which we didn't even talk about, uh, yeah into numerous other languages because if we looked at, um, I think over 40, about 45 states, Spanish is the second most spoken language. And so only because I know, you didn't tell me this, I know that Lynn is bilingual, that <laughs> any of these portals, you can, you can make them. So they're all bilingual. So then we wouldn't have to have a language barrier contingent upon who's buying and selling the property. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think you you bring a very good um, opportunity there, Marky, that you're talking about. So more than happy to actually talk after this and maybe collaborate together. Well, most definitely, I I would love to talk because, as I told you, I am concentrating on the solutions, not on the problem. I believe that technology is the solution. We have over 1.5 million members, and I believe that technology is what will ease them into what our next new normal will look like because it is not, nothing that they have uh, prepared for essentially the mass majority in the past and it will be new to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I want to thank you, Rafi and Don, for being here and looking forward to meeting you in person at the IOI Summit. If you want to know more, tell them where your website is. It's premisesas.com, so P-R-E-M-I-S-E-S-A-A-S.com. That's where you can find about us. So go over there, check out what they have to offer, and you can create an AI assistant. One of my favorite quotes is, 
artificial intelligence allows us to create a productive, electrifying, trained assistant. Premise AI, they have for you Lynn, Alice, and Quinn that can help you in your business. Thank you for tuning in.